Hey everyone, it's Pete DeYoung here with Remax, and I'm sitting here with my friend Kate. Hi. And we're going to give you a market update for July versus July of last year, and it's going to be super <gasps> intriguing, so stick around. It's not a market update, anything like we've given in probably the last couple of years, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about such a shortage of inventory and how it's driving up prices and everything else. The market has drastically changed, and uh, so we're going to be telling you all about that today. And we're going to finish off with something that we don't normally do, and that's talk about absorption rates. But I think the absorption rates actually explain a lot of, of where we're going with that. What's going on in terms of sales, Kate? So in terms of sales, year over year, we're actually down 10%. But there's good news in that. And for listings, we're actually up by 11%. But how can that be good news? It's good news for buyers, actually. Yes. Let me be very specific about that. It's actually good news for buyers. Um, how about inventory? How are we doing with that? Well, inventory is a result. When sales come down and new listings is, are up, both around 10 11%, inventory is up almost 20%, which is crazy. It's up 18.9 or 19%. And what that means is we're still in a bit of a seller's market. It's not like the market has collapsed or anything like that. But if you're a buyer, you've got a little less pressure than you did. Mm -hmm. I've seen markets years ago with three or four month supply, and we're now down to uh, just under a two month supply. Yeah. So I think, uh, like I said, it's still a seller's market, but the pressure is off a little bit. It's not like every house you look at is going to be a selling over list. You're going to be competing with 20 people and that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, homes, especially in the higher price ranges, you need to be sitting a little bit longer and not competing yeah. like they were and, and that kind of stuff too. Anything so kind of around 600,000 and up. Yeah. Is what we're noticing. And then in terms of prices. In terms of prices. So generally, prices are up about almost 8%. Wide, yes, right? That's the whole market year over year. Because detached are up uh, just over 11% year yes. over year. This is July last year versus July this year. So yeah. that's a significant price increase, 11%. Townhouses, or sorry, semi-detached semi did even better, right? Yeah, semi-detached is actually up over almost 12% actually year over year. And yeah. townhouses are up even more. Yes, right? townhouses They're... are up almost 15% compared to last year. That's, That's crazy. crazy. And then apartments are up even more, right? <laughs> At 17%. Do you, I swear, you were talking about this, Pete. I was saying a year yeah. ago, yeah. buy an apartment. <laughs> In fact, I'm still saying it. Even at 17% price increases, we've seen the absorption rates really slow down on uh, on apartments. But there's areas of the city where I still think there's there's room for growth. Yes. And that includes, of course, our downtown. Because our downtown, don't forget, our downtown was just devastated at one point between the crash in oil prices and COVID okay. sending everybody home. Downtown just kind of emptied out. We, we had a 30% vacancy rate in the Beltline yeah. at one time of all the homes that were listed. So it was really, really bad. And I don't think we've fully recovered yet. I think no. downtown is still... An opportunity, if you're looking, when we see price increases on condos, a lot of it is outside the downtown. It's almost like the downtown is still lagging behind the rest of the city and you're still yes, going to see it. True. People want to live downtown. It's uh, especially in Calgary. It's a fun place to be. So mm -hmm. so in terms of absorption rates, well, let's first talk about areas of the city. Yes. yes. Your area of the city, of course, has performed the best because yep. that's just your luck. But uh, or skill, Represent. wisdom whatever it is, <laughs> foresight. But what did your area of the city do? So our area of the city did actually really good. In terms of benchmark prices, we're looking at a almost 17% increase. Which is just crazy that's for one crazy. year, year over year. Yeah. And that's the east side of the city. Uh, yes. You're in Albert Park, right? One of the most up and coming neighborhoods in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the northeast is up uh, second most, right? Your northeast is up about 13%. And the rest of the city is around 8 9% thing, except for downtown. Downtown is still yeah. only up 4.2%. Um, yeah. And I still think if I talk to friends that work downtown, you're still seeing more and more of them return to work more than they were. So yes. they started off by working from home during COVID. Then they were back to two or three days a week. Now, the last guy I talked to is an engineer at, I always get it wrong. I think he's at Synovus, but he's back to working full time. He has to be at the oh, office every single day again. Days. And if that starts to happen more often... And especially if we get new federal leadership, please, uh, <laughs> might actually see uh, a bit of a boom in, in the oil and gas uh, industry again as well, which will bring a lot of these uh, young engineers and stuff downtown. So I still think there's 
mark my words, there's still an opportunity to buy a, an apartment downtown or even a house downtown. I think downtown is going to is going to boom again. So, but that's what we're seeing right now. In terms of absorption rates, here's the shocking news. So absorption rates is we look at them from a monthly perspective. So this is what the inventory is now. And then how much of that inventory is uh, absorbed over the course of a month. And in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare from mid-April, which is sort of when the market started to peak and then come back down. Because it, it really started that long ago. We're really starting to see the effects now in terms of sales being down and listings being up. The excitement's left the market to some degree. But from mid-April to today, Tashed Homes had an absorption rate of just over 100% in oh April. Gosh. We're down to 50 absorption rate. In houses, we're at 120% absorption rate. We're down to 65. These are wow. cut in half. Wow. Yeah. And then apartments, we're at an 85% absorption rate, and they're down to 50 now. Wow. And then within that 50, of course, depending on what price range you're at or which area of the right. city, it could be still drastically different. So with any... Uh, with anything that we tell you uh, with respect to the real estate market, you really have to get in touch with Kate or me, and we may have a couple other people joining our team. Should we tell them about that? Okay, a secret. Except to say mm -hmm. that you are going to love these two mm -hmm. probably almost as much as I do. So we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll introduce them in the next video or not or whatever. We'll see how it goes, but uh, they're awesome. And anyway, so get a hold of Kate or me if you want to know what's going on in your house, whether it's a bungalow in Bennington or a townhouse in Tuscany or a, what should I add, apartment in Altador. I'm pretty good at that, eh? Yeah, you are. Yeah, I know. I'm a natural. <laughs> I should rap or something. You should make it into a song. I bet I'd have to sing it. Trust me, yeah. nobody would ever want to hear it. I'd love to hear that. Nobody. Well, I'll get my daughter to sing it. <gasps> there you go. Yeah, she's going to be pro pretty <laughs> soon. My daughter's uh, making an LP in the next couple weeks, yes. When she's done her acting, that girl. She's a superstar. She really is. And she always was. When she was like two or three, she used to stand on the coffee table and go, superstar. Oh, my God. She we have a video of it. One day she we're going to have to. manifested that. I guess. She always said <laughs> she was a super. Oh, you say manifesting, but it really is a thing. A lot of business coaches and stuff will say, imagine yourself in the place that you want to be and really picture it deeply until you're there. And you hear about this all the time. Muhammad yeah. Ali was saying he was the best boxer in the world when he was like five or six and he became he it. Became it. Mulroney was telling people he was going to be a prime minister when he was in his early teens. So there is something to this. I just started trying to figure out how I'm going to be a success. I just always wanted to be a good dad. So I, I try. I don't know. I get okay. Anyways. Uh, wow. Well, did we ever go off top? Well, that was a little <laughs> that is getting good, But it is funny. Uh, so she always said she was a superstar. And I yeah. guess uh, she might be turning into one. Who knows? She is one. Anyways. So let us. <laughs> that was a total diversion I from know. real estate market. Well, I just love talking about my kids. <laughs> get together with me. I'll tell you about all four of them because they're all amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway. So that's it for this month, I think. Right? Anything you wanted to add, Kate? Oh, all right. Well, we hope that you are having a fantastic summer. We hope that you're watching this from a beach yes, somewhere in the Okanagan somewhere. or the East Kootenays or something like that. And just going, those poor people are still in their office, <laughs> working away, slaving away. But you know what? We do it for you yes. because you're important to us. Aren't they, wow. Kate? That was very, very hard part. It's true. <laughs> Anyways, have a great summer. We'll talk to you again in a month. We'll see you guys. Bye.